Joining us, I'm Amy Burkett. There's a new sheriff in town, literally. Gary McFadden was elected in November. He's a Democrat and a former cop. But that's where the similarities end between McFadden and most of Mecklenburg's recent sheriffs. In fact, McFadden's outspoken stand on immigration enforcement is bringing him and Mecklenburg County national attention, both positive and negative. Jeff Sawyer has more from the Mecklenburg County Jail, where the controversy started. Yeah, here at the Mecklenburg County Jail, we're a long way from the U.S.-Mexico border, but not so far from the nationwide debate over illegal immigration. With the new Mecklenburg okay, sheriff right in the middle of that debate. How, how is Mecklenburg electing a sheriff like this, McFadden, right? Is that his name? We yep, that's his name, Sheriff Gary McFadden. So we're talking about singling out a group of people because of something that the president or somebody else wants to do. I just don't agree with it. My fellow Americans. Which is why on the same night the president was talking to the nation about immigration, Fox News was also talking about McFadden. What happened there to thwart the rule of law with this 287G policy of cooperating with federal officials on immigration, Sheriff? Locked up, they won't let me out. And, I had and the new sheriff's decision to stop checking the immigration stack. Can't get me out. Now I'm headed to the county. Of suspects locked up for other crimes at the Mecklenburg County Jail. It's a program known as 287G, a program that no, former no, Mecklenburg no. sheriffs, including McFadden's no, election no, opponent, no. Erwin Carmichael, still support. There's a lot of bad folks that are here in the community. And again, we want to make sure the community is safe. Yeah. We want to make sure that they are removed uh, when they commit crimes. I knew it was going to be some conversation. I thought it was going to be more of a local and regional. Never thought it'd get to that national attention. Is it good or bad attention? Well, it could be good and bad. Um, it's good to expose what is really going on in America. Um, sometimes it's good to expose racism. It's good to expose hate. How does 287G represent racism or hate in terms of you wanting to get rid of that program? Well, it's, it is targeting, you know, a demographic. In Charlotte, McFadden says you can find that demographic in places like the city's working class east side, where immigrants are looking for jobs, looking for a place to live, looking for a better life, and they're afraid that ICE is looking for them. These are raids captured on video by ICE's own cameras, immigrants in other cities being chained and detained. The federal government and ICE and Homeland Security will do their job. We will also assist them to where we can help them, but we're not going to be assisting them on the 287G side. A lot of people want to talk about 287G. 287G is history. So now let's move forward. That decision on 287G by the new sheriff comes after immigrant protests in the streets. And at Charlotte City Council meetings two years ago, complaints from immigrants that local elected officials weren't listening to. So McFadden promised during the campaign that signing an end to the jail's 12-year immigration deal with ICE was the first thing he'd do as sheriff, which it was. But what happens after the political season? What have to after right. the promises? I only want to be a politician doing election season. Other than that, I'm just a beat cop, street cop. Charlotte's a banking city. You're going to have your million dollar murders and you're going to have your five dollar murders. I got to work both of them. McFadden is best known for his long and colorful career as a Charlotte police homicide detective. Street, man to man, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Which even led to this TV series about McFadden. That's homicide. That's homicide. And the murder cases he's investigated. And now, after decades as a detective sending suspects off to jail, Sheriff McFadden's new focus is what happens to those inmates in jail and after jail. You know, we're going to start a community engagement um, unit here. We're going to have um, a barbershop inside um, the detention center. Um, we have a date in March that we're going to have, you know, a job fair inside the detention center. So all this is different. 
And here's another difference. The new sheriff is sending Mecklenburg deputies out to investigate fender vendors on I-77 and I-85. It's part of a plan to help out the highway patrol and to make those deputies more visible in the community, not just at the courthouse or the jailhouse. I think that you have to listen to the public. You know, we have many people that say, well, give me a seat at the table. Well, how about you leave the table and talk to the people in the streets? When police protesters hit the streets back in 2016, McFadden was out there too. He wasn't a police officer anymore, but he knew what the cops were feeling and what cop protesters were feeling too. Did I have to tell people to put the rocks down? Oh, sure. Did I have to tell the officers, just, just give him a moment? Sure. You feel the side from the African-American perspective, because I am, and do you feel uh, injustice has happened? Yes. You feel the hours that the officer has to work and he has to take, you know, the cursing and the spitting and everything else? Yes. So you see both sides of it. And I think it is a unique perspective and we need to recognize that. I'm a little different. Yes, I'm not, I wasn't the brass at CMPD and I'm not ever going to be the brass. But now I am the brass, but I'm at the top and I'm happy to, to be that person that people see that that is really different. Jeff joins me now on set. Jeff, talk to us a little bit. So he is the first African-American sheriff ever elected in Mecklenburg County, That's but right. that trend is spreading across our state. Yeah, the last election, uh, all seven of the most populous counties in um, North Carolina, they all elected African-American sheriffs, many of them for the first time. All of those uh, new sheriffs, by the way, all ran on the same sort of anti-hardline immigration policies that Sheriff McFadden ran on here, which I guess shows a couple of things. A, that that can be an effective way to bring together the minority communities, black community, and the Hispanic community under one umbrella, one issue. And also, um, I guess the president's uh, outspoken stand on immigration is unifying Democrats on the other side of the aisle behind candidates who take an anti-Trump, anti-immigration kind of a stance as, uh, as Sheriff McFadden did. Help us understand, he's doing things very differently mm -hmm. than the other sheriff did, and it involves inmates. Talk to us about that. Yeah, um, you know, as we saw in the story, uh, Sheriff McFadden says he's as interested in um, the inmates that he puts behind bars as keeping crime in the community at a, at a minimum. And this is his way, it was a campaign promise, and this is his way of trying to ensure that those criminals who wind up behind bars, who wind up in jail, don't get out of jail and wind up committing crimes again. Uh, these uh, no more solitary confinement and in-person visits, something that the last sheriff didn't do, that uh, Sheriff McFadden is bringing back, and he thinks that will, in the long term, help these inmates you know, find a better life, non-criminal life, when they get out of jail. And he's trying to raise the profile, not only of himself, but of his sheriff's deputies, in a way that's pretty interesting and I haven't heard of done before. Yeah, you know, um, out of all the things that he mentioned, uh, putting sheriff's deputies out on the interstates to investigate uh, fender benders instead of the highway patrol may be the thing that touches most of us when it comes to the sheriff's department. Right now, unless you go to court or you go to jail or you're served with papers, chances are you won't see a deputy. But the sheriff wants to raise the profile of his department and his, his office, and this may be a way to do that by putting those deputies out on the streets where everyday citizens who don't have any contact with the criminal justice system will see their deputies. Jeff Sonier, thanks so much for educating us and informing <laughs> us again. Thank you. Parents know their kids.